Tonight's guest, I'm really, I am so excited about this chat. His name is Stuart Hill, and we had a guy called Danny Bamping on uh, about six weeks ago, and he told me about Stuart, and he said, "Well, you need to you need to look into this for Vic. Um, it's uh, you know it's it's up with, near Scotland." And he went around and he told me basically a bit about what's happening there. Um, the, the website address is www.forvic.com, or if you just go to the top of the site, there's actually a link forvic.com. Um, and do you know what? In my basic mank uh, vocabulary, I'm going to leave much of this to Stuart because I, how, I spoke to him briefly today for about five minutes. And if this is right, and I do believe from reading his site and listening to this, this gem, if this guy has got this right, the implication is world changing. And we do world changing on this station. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to that. He will be with us in about 10 minutes time. Um, it's all Scotland. I don't know about you guys at the moment and you can, I don't know. I mean, to everybody listening around the world, to everybody listening to podcasts, to everybody listening to chat rooms, to everybody listening through blog talk, to everybody listening around the world. What I want you to do basically for the next couple of hours, just chill out, enjoy yourself. You know, if you're in the chat box, have a bit of a laugh, listen to what's got to be said. We're all in this together. What is happening? I don't know, the research that I'm doing in all different areas, and I speak to so many different people every day. Scotland, 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 Scotland is coming to me in so many different guises. It's untrue. There's something about Scotland that holds a key in all that is happening in the world, or all that has happened, and it's coming to the fore. I truly believe that, and I have done for personal reasons, but now it's just in your face where I just, I mean, has anybody even, uh, I mean, I took some time off on Saturday um, and I tried to get a bit of a rest and uh, my friend bought the film Prometheus um, over and he said, um, you know, check out this film, you're going to like it, you like all that type of thing, um, you've been out with a few aliens, check out this film, you might see someone you like. And there you go, the first five minutes, the Isle of Sky in Scotland, basically, beginning of creation or part of it's just there's so much going on with that area at the moment i'm wondering if you guys are noticing that also hello stuart hello paul oh excellent fantastic oh great firstly stuart um um welcome to critical mass radio um thank you for taking the time out again um this evening because i do know as i said earlier that you're a busy chap how have you been doing today are you okay uh yes i'm doing fine thanks Excellent stuff. Again, for all the listeners, you can see the link there. I've got it in the I've got it in the middle of the site, and it's also attached to the top. But we will go through that again for you. It's www.forvic.com if you'd like to just check that site out while um, Stuart and I are having a chat. Well, Stuart, I tell you what, we'll go straight into it then, um, because you cr- you quite rightly corrected me um, this morning when I said I'm be talking about Scotland tonight, and you said, well, that's not really anything to do with myself. And that sort of links to really what you're doing. So can you just sort of Basically, in your in your own way, break down what it is that you're trying to do and start off from where you're comfortable with, Stuart, for everyone. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, well, the reason I said that was because I've spent the past 10 years um, researching Shetland's constitutional position um, and uh, coming to the realisation that uh, not only is Shetland not part of Scotland, but that it never could have been part of Scotland. But... Um, I'll go right back to the beginning when I first came to Shetland. Um, I came, as you can probably tell, I'm not a Shetlander. I came from England. Um, I was attempting to sail around Great Britain solo, non-stop, in a 14-foot open boat, and Shetland was as far as I got. Um, Just before I landed here, I got a call on the boat uh, from my wife of 33 years saying... Um, I'm moving to France, I've sold the house, and I don't particularly want you to come with me. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> um, the, the internet company I was running at the time had just collapsed, oh, and on that particular day, I'd made two attempts to get past um, a, a, the latitude of a village called Hillswick in Shetland, that's on the west side, and I was about 50 miles off the coast. And uh, on the third attempt... Um, that w- this was just trying to go against the wind and it was uh, coming up to a force nine storm 
um, I decided that uh, I might just as well pack up for the night and uh, get some sleep. And before I knew it, uh, I, w I was asleep and uh, the, the boat had rolled over. I designed it to be um, self-writing from any position, but I hadn't tested it with a full load on board. And um, there I was under the boat with it upside down and uh, not writing itself. Um, so I had to make up my mind, am I going to uh, be a hero and uh, make myself comfortable in the upturned boat or do I call the rescue services? And with no sign of the storm abating, I decided I'd call the rescue services. So they have a saying up here, that incomers, they call them soothmoothers. Um, that's nothing to do with the way you speak. It's just that... Um, Everybody comes in on the ferry in the south mouth, the Soothmouth of the harbour. Okay. So right. Yeah. I came in from the west, so nobody can call me a Soothmoother. <laughs> um, now, I was uh, exactly 58 and a half on that day, almost to the day. And some years ago, I decided to live to 117. So this was the, the halfway point. And all these events together seemed to me to be a significant crossroads. So I arrived in Shetland with literally the clothes I stood up in. The last 30p I had had gone down when the boat went over. And uh, uh, people were saying to me, well, they, they were kind of commiserating with me. How awful for you. And I, all I could see was the positive side. Uh, how many people ever have the opportunity in their lives to look at a blank sheet with no ties or responsibilities and think, well, that was the first 58 and a half what am I going to do with the, the second half? I can design it with the experience of the first half and do it as I want it this time. So that's what I've been doing ever since I came to Shetland. But in England, I had absolutely no interest in either politics or history. It, it, they seem to be just irrelevant in England. But here, it's it's much more relevant and a small population and it seems that there is the possibility that you might be able to do something where you can't do it in England. So quite soon after I arrived here the, uh, it, there came in the paper um, a leaflet with, um, with the local paper about the old Norse Udall law. Okay. That interested me um, but it was an, anon an anonymous uh, leaflet. I couldn't find out any more about it from the author. But then um, I went to a talk um, to find that it was it had present day relevance. And so I started to uh, research it and started to realise well things are not as they seem in Shetland. There's, there seems to be something not quite right with the constitutional position. I couldn't quite put my finger on it, but the more people I talked to, especially the older people, um, were telling me that you know, Shetland isn't part of Scotland. They came, um, they came from Norway, and they, a lot of the people here still trace their roots back to Norway, and certainly not uh, many to Scotland. Although, the official line is that we are a county of Scotland. Okay. So uh, that was, I came here in 2001. Uh, by 2008, I'd started to get quite a lot of information together. And uh, I got a call from a friend um, who I'd known in England, but we'd lost touch. He'd come up here, bought a croft, um, and we, we started talking, and I told him what we were doing. And with his croft, he had a very small island. It was no use to the croft, and we thought, well, that would be a really good thing to uh, to use to further what I was doing. So he gave me the island, and I proceeded to, uh, first of all, rename it. The uh, the present-day name was uh, Forrick Hom, for Wick, which means... Um, in the Old Norse, it's, it would be Forvik, which means Island of the Bay of the Sheep. But that's, so I, I renamed it the, the, the Norse name and proceeded to um, start to do all the kinds of things that would challenge the, the authorities here. Um, 
I first of all put up a house without asking for planning permission, did it very publicly so the, the local council knew what I was doing but they didn't bother to try and stop me or raise any questions. Um, I stopped paying my income tax and VAT and uh, HMRC um, sent the usual threatening letters and then finally uh, a court summons. I simply handed the, uh, the sheriff's officer a letter saying, I'm quite willing to pay this as soon as you tell me when Shetland became part of Scotland. So he went away and nothing more was heard. Um, I knew that I had to get this thing into the courts. I can I can put whatever I like out in the public domain uh, in 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 kind of proof or argument that Shetland is not part of Scotland, but nobody will take any notice until uh, the courts are forced to um, show how they get their jurisdiction. So obviously if I don't believe that Shetland is part of Scotland, I can't go to the courts here, I don't recognise them, uh, and say, well, the Crown Estates is charging us um, for the use of the seabed, uh, it's illegal, I want to bring a case to stop it. I can't do that. So I had to resort to being uh, sufficiently disobedient to the law so that I would get arrested or or find some means of getting into the courts to get somebody else to bring me to the court um, to contest a case. Then I can challenge the jurisdiction of the court. Well, this proved to be remarkably difficult. Um, next thing I did was to put um, a Land Rover on the road. Uh, I just parked it. It was completely decrepit. Uh, it had Forwick number plates on it, Forwick tax disc, uh, Forwick um, country of origin disc, uh, and notices in the window saying that I didn't agree to it being moved um, and so on. Uh, a member of the public took exception to this and uh, vandalised it so the police got involved and I got a call to say that, uh, uh, asking me to remove it and I said well no actually I, I want to leave it where it is, it's, it was parked and it, they said well it's in a dangerous condition, we're going to move it and we'll charge you for it. So I said okay and uh, well, the, the, the long or short of it is that they took away the vehicle, they destroyed it, but they didn't bring any charges. Okay. Um, meanwhile, I changed my electoral roll address to Forvik, which, although I didn't know it at the time, triggered a council tax demand. And I'm thinking um, when they, they said uh, that they would have to demand it, and I said, well, I'm not going to pay it until you show me when Shetland became part of Scotland. Um, and they said, well, we have to take you to court. I'm thinking, right, here we go. Then they decided that uh, the house wasn't finished and it was only a holiday home anyway and I'd have to revert my uh, electoral roll of dress back to the mainland. So they dodged the issue. Um, so coming into 2010, uh, I'm thinking, well, I need to up the ante a bit. So I got hold of a, a Mercedes van um, fitted it out with signs saying consular vehicle for Forvik. Uh, again, the same number plates, tax disc and everything and notices in the window. And I drove around in that for about six weeks before the police pulled me over for, for only having one brake light. Um, so again, they took the vehicle and after two weeks, uh, the legislation allows them to destroy it. And I'm thinking, well, I'm going to be in the same position with this one as I was with the Land Rover. So I put another one on the road, labelled Consular Vehicle Number 2, um, again with all the, the, the stuff. Uh, and it was only about three days before they stopped me in this one. But uh, this time I locked myself in and they had to actually break in and pull me out and arrest me. And at last I've got my court case. But it shows the lengths I've had to go to. Uh, anyone else uh, committing these so-called offences would be in the court the next day but right. they knew what I was going to be asking in the court and they didn't want to be having to answer that question when did Shetland become part of Scotland so the first thing I did in the court was to challenge the jurisdiction of the court and a hearing was arranged uh, specifically for that 
So I prepared my argument, it was 71 pages with 120 supporting documents, um, which I'm actually just making into a book now. Um, presented that argument, the prosecution presented their argument, which consisted of a single document. Uh, it was actually a magazine article by our archivist, um, and that was it. So that was their argument. The beauty of that is that they've, that hearing was specifically about jurisdiction. The Crown has now presented their case and they can't go back on it. That's it. That is their evidence. This is the official uh, evidence that Shetland is part of Scotland. A magazine article is entitled When Shetland Became Part of Scotland, A Contribution to the Debate. It's not even trying to prove or, or to be an authority that Shetland is part of Scotland. It's just a contribution to the debate. So that's the situation. Um, I, I went through the whole appeal process. Uh, the, 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 um, the, in spite of my evidence and what the, the Crown had put forward, the Sheriff decided he had jurisdiction. So um, I asked to uh, appeal that decision. I wasn't allowed to until I was convicted. And I think he knew full well that the, the appeal process is so convoluted. It's not meant for a layman to work their way through, but um, I've, I've managed to find my way through it, went through two appeals, uh, and the result is that uh, the three sheriffs here and four appeal court judges are unanimous that um, my argument's a load of rubbish and that uh, Shetland is part of Scotland because of a magazine article. <laughs> so that, that's the situation. They will not admit it. They cannot admit it. The political pressure is so um, intense. Um, I mean, you've got the oil here, um, and if, if Shetland was not part of the UK when the UK joined the European Union, what was it that joined the European Union? All of those treaties are in jeopardy um, because the the entity that joined it wasn't what it purported to be if Shetland was not part of it. So the implications are, are just huge. So this is one kind of worms here. Sorry, carry on, sorry. Uh, well, it, it's just not possible for one judge or one sheriff to say that he hasn't got jurisdiction because he's simply opening the floodgates. They have to find some kind of way, no matter what it is, of saying they've got jurisdiction. They cannot um, admit that they haven't got it. So during the course of this, I was sent to jail for 12 days uh, for um, reports. And at the last hearing, um, the sheriff threatened me with... Um, uh, psychiatric reports, he threatened me with prison um, because I, I wasn't uh, continuing to do to carry out the sentence um, and finally said well you don't have to finish off your sentence well he didn't have any option I wasn't going to do it but he had no means of, of enforcing it so he just had to let me off um, That I've, I've been involved in um, some civil cases, one one's with the uh, Royal Bank of Scotland, um, and at first I didn't see the connection between th that and what I was doing on the on the Shetland front. Um, I, again, to cut a long story short, I got uh, the Royal Bank of Scotland in a position where um, I am entitled to wind up their company. Um, and they've been fighting me for two years to try and stop me doing that. Um, and uh, at some point, I realised that the summons had been issued or served here in Shetland, and that if Shetland is not part of Scotland, then the whole proceedings are invalid. Uh, so I've, I've argued that point in the quarter session, uh, and they've completely failed to come up with any argument against it so at that point I've won but nobody told me so the judge went ahead and constructed an argument on their behalf um, 
So again, it shows the lengths that they're prepared to go to in order to protect their position. Um, another uh, sheriff here in in, um, in Shetland made me bankrupt, in spite of the fact that I'd um, challenged the jurisdiction of the court. He said to me, "No matter what you say to me, I cannot agree with what you say. I cannot agree with any evidence you put forward to say that Shetland is not part of Scotland." Well, if that's not um, having a closed mind, I don't know what is. Yeah, exactly. I, I, you, with, um, I mean, just from the opposition that you're putting forward there, that you've been subjected to, it all, it, I mean, it does smack of the fact that something is, is deeply wrong here. Um, with your sort of research, obviously that's that's you know led you on to 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 other avenues, but with your research now, I mean. Uh, uh, would you say uh, the wars are have been sort of closing in on you, as in with authorities, or are, are you finding now that because of the work that you're doing, that you're actually opening up different routes, and this this could sort of escalate in your favour? Um, well, it's all been failure up until now, um, uh, which is only to be expected. Yeah, yeah. But having got to this point, uh, and obviously I've had to. Uh, keep quiet about what's been going on in the court but now that the, the hearings are finished um, I can publicize it and I'm that's what I'm now doing I'm also um, going after the officials in the court um, I've accused them of um, um, uh, impersonating their positions uh, and illegally uh, imprisoning me and illegally arresting me and so on and I've reported them to the Inverness police so that takes it a stage further and ramps things up um, but again you know if I'm to be proved wrong somebody has to prove when Shetland became part of Scotland and as we've had the, the hearing on jurisdiction the Crown has already um, nailed its colours to the mast so um, it just gets. Uh, this is when it starts to get really interesting. So the, the all right. So let's let's go with this now that you, you are in fact, and it does sound that you are in fact correct. Um, what are the the implications then moving forward for, for Shetland? I mean, are, I mean, we, we talked briefly earlier, but I mean, this 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 opens. I mean, we, we talk about self sufficient people coming, you know, out of the sort of system that we're subjected to and sort of living. A different life, etc. And people are now listening to this, thinking, "Right, well, I'm off. Shetland's the place for me." Right. Well, um, it, it seems to me that you shouldn't go about breaking something unless you've got something to put in its place. Okay. Um, you know, a lot of people talk about uh, breaking the system and, and just raging about it without having anything uh, in its place. Well. That's really the whole point of Forvik to me. Um, what I would like to do is to uh, establish, uh, if you like, a haven for people who, when they get fed up with the existing system, have got somewhere to turn to. Now, that doesn't mean to say they have to come to Shetland. Um, what it means is that... Um, if we provide the means by which they can make their bit of the world, whether it be in the UK, the United States, or wherever, make their bit an independent state, we can then establish diplomatic relations with Forvik, um, and uh, they can become a diplomat for Forvik. Um, so the, they won't be a diplomat in their present country, it will only be in their no, in their new state. But when they leave their front door and get in their car and drive around their old country, they will be driving around in what is a third state under the Vienna Convention, which must give them diplomatic immunity. Under the Vienna Convention, okay, right. Can I just uh, just a question that's coming to our chat box? Um, and you um, would this apply also to the Orkney Isles? Would would you know? Um, a lot of what I'm saying, yes, does apply to Orkney, but there are sufficient um, 
historical differences uh, for, for it to be foolish of me to try and uh, lump the two together. It, be, it will be much easier to trip me up um, if I try and combine the two. Um, but uh, once I'm successful here in Shetland, then uh, it opens the doors completely for Orkney because the same arguments apply. It's just that the, the significant historical differences uh, would make it easy for the opposition to, um, to trip me up if I'm not fully focused on Shetland. Sure, so yeah, I, I understand. So it, yeah, stick with what you know for now, but you, you do feel that um, this, this is reaching into other um, areas as well. I mean, I'm just thinking that, um, and you know, if, if, we, if we're moving into to England, etc., that there are, there are so many now little boroughs that are opening up and there's these changes of, you know, towns that have never been, you know, this is going to be the new town here and that, that's this, that, you know, all these new areas that have, have been put together. Yeah, and um, and people aren't questioning them. That we're just all being smashed together into these these bigger areas, Greater Manchester, etc. This, that, the other. So again, with with what you're putting forward there, I'm starting to feel now that a lot of this would apply to a lot of what's happening throughout the UK. Well, absolutely. I, I think that that uh, Shetland actually holds the key to uh, this process, which is going on throughout the world. And the reason for that is that Shetland, because of its history and its, its constitutional position, is in a unique position to have a legal way out of where we find ourselves. But um, once the, the majority of the people of Shetland decide to take that route, um, then I become redundant, the history becomes redundant because it is then the will of the people for that to happen and nothing could stop it. And uh, it, it would then show other regions, territories, towns, villages or whatever that they could do the same thing. I think it will be a gradual process. What I'm hoping will happen here in Shetland, and it's, it's easier to envisage it in, in a small community. We're only 20,000 up here. Um, but um, as people up here take their piece of Shetland and join it on to what will be the sovereign nation of Shetland, an independent state where uh, they don't have to pay uh, the, the taxes that go into the treasury and then get used for whatever purpose that the government decides, wars in Iraq, Iran and Afghanistan and going into the European Union and so on, they will get the money in their pockets. They will be able to buy petrol without excise duty. They won't have to pay VAT. They will be so much better off and they will be able to decide what they want to do for themselves and live under rules that they are, are happy living under. Um, as, as more and more people see the benefits of that here in Shetland and start to join it, then that will become the de facto authority here and the existing will simply die on the vine. So I, I don't uh, even think about all this nasty stuff that's going on. Um, I don't want it as part of my reality. Um, and if you stop feeding the beast, it will die. Well said. Exactly. Well said. Um, a, a numbers game then, again, as with everything, people coming together. Are, are, am I right in suggesting that in the Shetland, in Shetland Isles now that there, there's systems in place um, different from what we're used to here in the UK and everywhere else, so that would, it would make it easier for, for people? Because, that, I mean, that's a huge selling point, isn't it, really? It's not so much that there are systems in place, but... Um, Shetland is a very different community to what I've been used to in England. Um, it's like one big family here. The, the first conversation two Shetlanders have to get when they get together, if they don't already know each other, is to establish their relationship, whether that be a blood relationship or people they know or whatever. They have to be comfortable with each other before they can have, you know, any proper conversation. Well, that that conversation simply doesn't exist in England because we don't have those those roots. But um, it has its good and its bad sides, but it means that um, this community will move as one 
when it decides to move. Um, so all I have to do is is show that it is possible to do things in a different way. It is possible to prove that the the UK has no authority here, and we once people start to laugh at those authorities and uh, and the police and 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 the courts and so on, then there will be a totally different situation here. Um, although I'm absolutely serious about what I'm doing, uh, I see no harm in having a lot of fun while I'm doing it. Yeah, yeah, it, uh, it, it would help. Um, with okay, let's look at it this way. So it, let's start suggesting that uh, many people sort of think well because you know yourself that many people are fed up with um, the rule and um, what they've been subjected to um, throughout the planet and and people look at uh, you know what you're doing there in Shetland and other areas maybe that are doing the same what's your next sort of plan now to establish that what you're putting forward is correct because obviously the the authorities have backed off they can't really answer to you so what's the next you know step up for yourself well the next step is to go after those um, those officials that have uh, caused me harm um, then in terms of setting up a new society we're looking at ways of having a fair money system a fair justice system a fair constitution and governance and basically rules by which uh, people want to live uh, and um, that that whole process uh, will be like a kind of instant direct democracy run by means of uh, uh, the uh, the internet and um, IT technology. We might as well make use of all that stuff. We've got it, so why not make the best use of it instead of uh, electing our representatives if we need to have representatives instead of electing them for four or five years uh, why not have uh, a kind of instant uh, input so that uh, you you can you can keep those people on their toes you put them in office at the moment they do what they like for the next four years and then you kick them out and get the next lot which basically have the same agenda but um, if the people that you want to do those jobs for you uh, don't actually perform, then there must be a way of getting them out uh, quickly so that you can get somebody else in to do what you want done properly. So you, you've got um, people that are, are around you at present who um, are backing you and working with you. Is, is that correct? Uh, <laughs> that would be an exaggeration. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I, I've got used to... I mean. I know there are a lot of people in the community that uh, want to see me succeed. And uh, But the nature of this community is that nobody can be seen to be supporting me until I'm successful. Oh, right. Okay. So I'm a lone voice at the moment. But at the same time, I will get stopped in the street on a regular basis and say, good on you, Stuart. Keep going. And... I know there's a bedrock of people here who are very supportive. They simply find it difficult in their family and community situation to come in, uh, come out in the open, and you know, actively support. See, what well, I think from what you're saying there is, and I seriously believe that many, many people, once they, once they get wind of what you're doing and, and the possibilities there, would gladly up sticks. Um, well, as I said, there is no need for them to up sticks. They can they can do this from where they are. This is not uh, a community that that needs to have a geographical place. It's just that that Shetland is convenient to look at in those terms. But this doesn't need to be a geographical community at all. Um, I, I understand. I understand what you're saying, but I think the point that yeah, and what I'm saying is that a lot of people just want to, if it's you know, to get away from Manchester or Bristol or just you know to go and start again as you have, that would be a nice place to sort of go and start with that basis. I think as well. But yeah, I mean, I'm just thinking of. I mean, I live in 
in a, in a, a borough called Trafford, which is actually not part of Manchester, even though it's slap bang in the middle of Manchester. And it's not part of Salford either, because Salford doesn't want to be part of Manchester. Now, this, this Trafford just goes under the radar, and nobody knows really why. It's just this borough that's just opened up. And it has diff- and it has different um, council tax rates, etc. So I'm 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 thinking along those lines as well. You see, right? Do, um, sorry. So you, I, I'm not quite clear what you're saying. Are you oh, saying, I'm saying that, it is in, and as an example as to what you're doing there, I'm wondering how much of this has gone on in England as well that we can pick up on a sort of work as you have and establishing the fact that this isn't connected. You know. Right. I'm, so in other words, if you wanted to establish. Uh, the sovereign state of Trafford, yeah. um, you could start by uh, wh- whoever you have there getting together and it might be two or three people, declare their bits of Trafford uh, independent states uh, as the sovereign nation of Trafford, for instance, um, and fe- um, establish diplomatic relations with Forvik. The beauty of that is that um, in order for anyone to challenge that diplomatic status, they have to come and prove, first of all, that Forvik is not an independent state, and secondly, that Shetland is part of Scotland. Now, we know that they cannot prove that Shetland is part of Scotland. So, who is going to take the risk of uh, further... Um, embarrassing the UK government by bringing this out into the open. Do you see what I mean? Yeah, so I, I'm going to link on to then. Okay, all right, I'm with you, I'm learning. I'm learning as you're talking now. This, I mean, this is... Um, it's almost this, super- this is the strength of of Forvik and Shetland, that, that nobody can now prove that Shetland actually is part of Scotland. And the more people rely on that and force the uh, the authorities to um, to come forward and question it, the more and more it's going to come out in the open. This, this has got legs. I, I really believe that, um, Stuart, what you're saying here, this is so, the far-reaching implications, of, I mean, as you say, across the world, um, it's, it's almost too much for me to take in because I, do, I believe in it so much. Um, <laughs> just, you know, things happen for a reason, as you say, and you sort yeah. of did where you did. You know, it's, it's, oh, there's no coincidences. No coincidences, exactly. Um, let's talk about your site a bit. Let's for everybody again. Um, I'll just go through that with you guys. It's www.4big.com. Um, check that out. It's looking good. You've got a lot going on there. Well, yes. Um, uh, you'll find if you um, dig through the site, there's all the correspondence I've had with the Queen and everybody uh, down from the Queen trying to find out uh, where their authority comes from, how did they get it, when did Shetland become part of Scotland. You might like the Forvik guidebook. Um, That's a bit of fun. Um, There's uh, a video of of me making the declaration of um, uh, a crown dependency, first of all, because that's where the historical situation led me. But since then... Um, because I've had no answer to the Queen when I offered to be her representative on Forvik, um, I've declared um, Forvik as an independent state. So we can now do all the things that a, an offshore island would be able to do. Uh, we're just starting to issue passports and um, diplomatic passports. Uh, there's various things that you can buy as merchandise, T-shirts, and there will be flags shortly. Um, and all that stuff. It's just, you know, that side of it is, is fun. We need a bit of money to um, uh, to do the things we're doing. But um, basically, I've been running this on my pension. And uh, it, it, it's uh, it's been, you know, taken very little to, to actually do what I've done. Because I've represented myself in the court, of course, I've not um, racked up lawyer's fees. Otherwise... Uh, I, I'd be dead by now, <laughs> probably literally as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So, um, I mean, just a question here. If if somebody was in a bit of bother in the, in England, yeah, could they 
jump over to you up there, you guys up there, um, and sort of be immune from other possibilities that they may be subjected to in the court in England? Uh, <laughs> well, I've, I've never been asked that before, but I, I, I suppose there is every possibility that um, anyone wanting to be, yeah, you could easily argue that um, the UK has no authority here. That's what I've been doing this past 10 years. Um, I, I wouldn't like to think that we're going to attract a lot of hardened criminals. But... <laughs> Forgive me. I mean, yeah. even, even if people were just, you know, just having just basic trouble with authorities over, over something that, you know, with all the ills that are, are wrong on this planet. And, yeah, yeah. That, you know, that they just thought, do you know, there's an easy way out of this for me. And if I can go to Shetland or, or wherever it is that's become independent, then, I, you know, that I'll be immune and they can't touch me for so many years until we sort all this out. You know, that's what I was thinking. Well, yes, but, but I mean, uh, you could apply exactly the same arguments wherever you are. Yeah. You don't have to actually come here in order to take advantage of Shetland's unique position. Because, but the, the important thing is to get these things in place before you get into the trouble. You know, I, I've, I've purposely gone out of my way to get myself arrested in order that I can engage with the... The, the, the so-called justice system here um, but um, if I'd done that in England I, I would have made sure that I've got myself protected before I do it um, I, I was kind of just um, poking the thing with a stick to see what it would do up here uh, in the expectation that um, they wouldn't be able to prove that that um, they have any authority. The only thing that keeps the authority in place up here is because people simply do not question it. Yeah. As soon as you start asking questions, then um, you've got all kinds of things opening up. But you can ask those questions in England, in France, in wherever you might happen to be, if you have that affiliation already with Forvik. So it's, yeah, so it's just basically the affiliation in place first. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because when you go into court, you you will go into court as a diplomat, as uh, a, a, a diplomat of Forvik. You will claim diplomatic immunity, um, and there there is no way that that can be challenged. Excellent. Just we've got about five minutes left. Um, Stuart. Gosh, doesn't time fly? When you're I, I, I said it would. Then I, I knew, I knew this would happen. What? Just tell us a bit about Shetland. Aside from everything you're doing, because it, I mean, it, it does sound uh, in people. You know, we do talk about, you know, places that right out in the country. It, it seems to be so far out there. Is is it a nice place to be? It's absolutely magic. Um, I I didn't realise uh, in in common with with. Uh, I think probably most English people, just where Shetland is. I, I recommend you have a look at an atlas um, when the, the program's finished and just see where it is. We're right out in the Atlantic. Um, it's a 14-hour ferry journey from uh, Aberdeen. When you look on the map, it's often in a little box in the Firth of Forth, or I thought it might be in, in the Hebrides when I set out on my journey. Um, but I, I had to find out where I've got to turn round at the top and there was Shetland, but that's that was literally the first time I realised where Shetland was. Um, but it's a magic place. The people are just wonderful, um, and these have been the best eleven years of my life. Oh, um, but weather-wise, what are we looking at? Oh, it's awful. <laughs> people don't come here for the weather. But but I mean, having said that. Well. Um, it's it's a maritime climate, so we don't have severe yeah. winters and we don't have very hot summers. Um, but very often we'll find ourselves in in pretty good weather up here when the rest of the UK is is uh, uh, just drowned. Um, but there's never a shortage of wind up here. The the days when we have um, light winds are few and far between. So that makes it um, sometimes difficult to actually get on to Forvik and. Uh, um, I, I don't actually live there. I go there 
mainly during the summer, um, but there are a few days during the winter when, when I can actually get out there. And uh, to the west from Forvik is uh, Newfoundland, so um, it's absolutely open to the Atlantic and, we, uh, and a very fast tide in the sound there. So if you've got wind against tide, you can easily get 30, 40 foot waves and the island is only 30 feet high. So, uh, okay. That's, well, I think every day would be different. Um, we, yeah. we we played a clip on um, crofting um, a few weeks back. Oh yes. Yeah, and that's that does appeal to many people as a, as a sort of different way of life as well, a more self sufficient sort of standing really. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's it, this, there seems to be many possibilities. They say at a sort of different pace of life there. Well, if if people would like to talk to me about. Um, crofting uh, there are possibilities in Shetland um, and um, there is a crying need for people to come and uh, work the crofts here um, I, I don't want to go into too much detail at the moment but if, if people want to contact me about that then uh, I, I'd be pleased to talk to them well, I'll be speaking to you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I tell you what, you've been absolutely fantastic. Um, I, just more over, I want to say thank you for putting yourself um, out there. And as you say, you put yourself in a position where you want to be arrested. It's a new one on me. Um, um, we, it's just, you know, really, thank you for all that you've done. Um, thank you for taking the time to speak to us all. And um, It's been a pleasure. Just go on the website and uh, sign up for membership. It's £20. And uh, you can all be a part of this this new community which um, is coming into being. Excellent stuff. Well, are we okay to speak to you again in, in a few months' time just to see how you get in on? Is that okay? Sure. Yes. Brilliant, Stuart. Well, that, that was fun. Thank you for your time, mate. I'll speak to you soon. Can you end the call at your side, please, bud? Yep. Okay. All the Thank best. you. Thanks. Bye. Stuart, ciao. Bye bye. Okay, guys. <sighs> Oh, well, that's uplifting me. Um, really impressed with that. Right. Okay. Um, 